joining us this evening. Uh, we are going, to, this is the first lectures forum since I've uh, taken office. Um, we are going to go through the contests and I'm going to uh, give you a little bit of information about me. I know some of you, I don't know all of you. Um, so I thought that I need to at least uh, share my experience as um, a lecture and that type of thing. So I'm going to start with part of the presentation that I gave at uh, the Leaders Conference uh, a week or so ago. Uh, so um, if you have questions at any time, go ahead and ask, and we will, uh, I'll try to answer the questions and uh, as best as I can uh, with moving forward with, with the Grange. So we're moving forward with Grange programming. Uh, is the the topic that I used for this presentation. And a little bit about myself. I live, uh, I'm a 48 year Grange member, um, fifth generation. Um, my great grandparents would have been uh, charter members of the Quinault Grange on the Olympic Peninsula. Um, and now the Quinault Grange of course is no longer in existence and all of those members have consolidated with my Grange and Hump Tulips. Um, I went to WSU and you can see the, on the map a little star of uh, where I am at. So we are about 10 miles from the ocean and about 30 miles from the mountains um, where we get um, a lot of rain, about 80 inches a year. So a lot of the things I deal with uh, are focused on on weather as well. A lot of small uh, microclimates in our area. So I'm the current president of the Washington State Grange. I've served as the state lecturer. I was in that position for 16 years. Also as the assistant steward gatekeeper, I've done the membership department, I've done the community service, and I've been the youth. My first state position was on the youth committee as the youth director of the state Grange. For the Pomona Grange, I'm in Grays Harbor, Pacific Pomona, which is the two uh, counties in the center down to the southwest coast uh, of our state. I'm currently the lecturer and the family living chairman. Nobody would take family living, so I ended up with both since we run our contests together and we do have large contests in, uh, in our Pomona. I'm a past master of the Pomona. Actually, I was recycled twice. Um, the little story I told at the master's conference or the leader's conference, I was Pomona master and I decided four years was enough and I went out. We elected a new Pomona master, a new overseer. The Pomona master proceeded to pass away in April. The overseer moves up. We had a vacancy in overseer and I didn't have an office. So I said, sure, I'll fill the overseer position. Well, our second Pomona master that year passed away in September. So I went back in as a Pomona master. Um, and I've been back since then as well. I went out and, uh, I'm not Pomona master anymore, but lecture is just as busy, uh, for my subordinate Grange, which is hump tulips. I am the current secretary. And then I'm a past master and lecturer of hump tulips. Lecture was my first Grange office back when I was 16 years old, um, in the Grange. So that's many, many, many years ago. Uh, and then I'm the current junior Grange leader and I, uh, in 2006, we started uh, Moorhead Junior Grange Camp, and I am have been the director. I am retiring from that position, starting the transition this year, and so that will be one less thing on my plate as I move forward. So I've worked in the fair industry since 1985. I took a two-year break to work with youth development for WSU Cooperative Extension, and then I was a fair, I've been a fair manager since 1998. I retired in May of this last year as the manager of the Washington State 4-H Fair, which is the 4-H portion of the Puyallup Fair. And so uh, the Puyallup Fair is our state fair and the 4-H Fair is independent, but held at the same time in the same facility. So a little bit about how I see the role of the lecture. Um, the lecture is the educator of the Grange and looking at the installation charge. The lecturers educate the members and provide opportunities from, for the members to develop their minds and talents. 
We plan programs and activities to introduce non-members to the Grange organization, who we are, what we can do to improve our communities, and we create a support network throughout the community to, to stimulate support for Grange projects and activities. Um, moving on to specific duties of the lecture, stimulating and developing the collective thinking of the membership is a real key, and we do that through our programs and our our contests and activities that we as lecturers provide. Uh, the lecture is to be prepared as a vital function of each regular Grange meeting with a program. We encourage the young and new members to participate in programs and discussions and provide opportunity for members to learn about the Grange, local, state, and national history, policies, legislative activity, and purpose. And we help develop and participate in Pomona state, regional, and national conferences which is where we share ideas and network with other lectures. So I think we're getting just about down to the end of this portion. So um, we're gonna go through the contest, but I wanted to share the one slide here on the virtual photo contest. The National Junior Grange team recommended that we add a junior division to the virtual photo contest because the juniors have had no contest uh, like that. Um, so we are adding a junior class for uh, junior Grangers ages 5 to 14, and the age will be as of January 1st of the current calendar year. So the January 1st that we just passed will be the age that we use uh, for entering the contest. The divisions for uh, the juniors will be pets, nature, summer fun, and scenic photos. And I've tried to get looking with a state that has a junior photo contest. I looked at what classes over the course of several years had um, the most participation. Um, and I, I tried to stay away from people photos because if we do use the photos for um, promotion, either um, making greeting cards or postcards or posters or calendars, I didn't want to have to bother too much with photo releases uh, from each individual in the photo. So we may have some in, uh, in summer fun, but we shouldn't have a whole lot. So juniors may enter a total of four photos and that they all may be in one category or there may be in one in each category or any combination thereof. Um, similar to the regular photo contest, entries must be no more than one year old at the time of submission and all entries must be submitted electronically by September 1 and we will have monetary prizes as well. So looking at the other contests that we have this year, uh, programs that we are continuing will be the Quilts of Valor Partnership, and many states are um, participating in that. And my goal is to better relay to the subordinate in Pomona Granges how they can be involved in that at their levels. Since we have some, but we just don't have a lot of subordinates in Pomona doing that project. Uh, we are continuing a quarter's worth newsletter. Um, it's not gone out yet. I am. I'm a full-time state master, and so my month of January and February have been pretty much on the road. I mean, I came home from Myrtle Beach on Tuesday of last week, and Friday I headed to Spokane. Um, and so w just a lot of different things going on, so I have to get everything that fits into my, my schedule and Phil's schedule with him doing all of the editing and that type of thing. So that will be coming out shortly. Uh, reducing food waste, that is an initiative that is listed on the National Grange website under programs for the lecture department, and we will continue with that as food security and food insecurity are, are big topics in many of our areas. And tonight we have our lectures forum, plus our contests that we will have, the virtual photo, the quilt block, the garden design, design a program, and the weather watcher challenge. So something before I go into contests, I want to talk a little bit about where I'm looking at uh, where the lectures department may uh, want to look at for the future. Um, 
we do we have a clear vision and how does the lectures department fit into that vision the leaders developed a new vision statement for the national grange a couple of weeks ago and so now we will be putting uh determining how the lectures fit in meeting and working toward that same vision um, questions that i have for lectures are do lectures nationwide have the tools necessary to move their Grange forward with an emphasis on meeting the vision of the National Grange? And if not, how the lectures department can prepare and provide information to our lectures to make that possible. Uh, a question that, that I have is, is there a need for a core set of basic educational topics for all Grange lectures to access for their programs? At one time we had four or five topics at the national level and provided educational material to um, the state lectures who could then share that with the subordinates. And do we still wanna go that direction or do we let everybody remain on their own? Um, are we providing appropriate, interesting contests for our members to perfect their skills and showcase their talents? We have some contests, are they the right contests? Those are questions that we are looking at. And then uh, following the success of the Dictionary Project and the Quilts of Valor Partnership, what is our next signature activity? Those two programs have been very successful for a number of years in many areas, um, but we can't rest on programs that were good and that worked. You know, the, the Dictionary Project, we're approaching year 20. That was one of the projects that started in one of my first few years of state lecture. Uh, Quilts of Valor, we are looking at year eight. And so, so what is the next program that we can look at for a nationwide program? And do the state lectures have the skills and experience necessary to develop and implement contests at the state level? With my fair experience, I can uh, provide information to the lectures so that we can make, uh, make them um, more capable or more comfortable with, with putting those types of programs together. So to address these needs and concerns, uh, I'm looking at creating a lecture advisory team, six to eight members from all regions, state ranges of all sizes, not all state lectures, but to include subordinate and Pomona lectures as well. We will meet via Zoom and we will discuss and make recommendations for programs, contests, and creating the toolbox for all lectures um, across the nation. If you are interested or you have any recommendations for that, this is my contact information. I am using the, the state range office for now, um, as long as I'm in that office, as I am there more than I am actually at home. Uh, we have a mailing address and you see the street address. They are on the, the website. Um, that is the office phone number and my cell number. Uh, don't hesitate to call at any time, leave a message and I can call you back. Keep in mind that when I am home, I don't necessarily, I live in, in, I live in the sticks. And so um, I'm 20 miles out of town. Um, I don't always get cell service in the house. And with as much rain as we get, I don't feel necessarily like running 10 yards up the driveway to answer your phone call. So leave a message and I can give you a call back when I am in uh, in uh, a good area to do that. And then you, the email lecture at nationalgrange.org or thgwin at wa-grange.org. The lecture ones are, um, Phil has forwarding to my other email. And um, when I'm in the office, I reply on, work on those daily. Um, occasionally, it's a few days before I get back. So anybody have any questions on what we have gone through so far? I hate how it gets silent. Okay, so let's go to the contests that we have this year. And the first one is going to be the quilt block contest. Um, and this year for the quilt block contest, we are using the Quilts of Valor quilt block from 2023. So these blocks can be made into Quilts of Valor 
following uh, the judging and the next national, the session in November. So it's open to everybody, uh, Grange members and members to be. I have my first three entries in. Uh, they came from Vermont. So the rest of the you states need to uh, light a fire under your members to get that spark going so that we can uh, be able to provide that. Uh, they are due, ent entries are due September 1st. And you have the address here on the entry form. Um, anything received after the entry form won't be judged. And that's pretty standard. Um, so we have two groups, adults 14 and above and juniors 13 and under. And we have monetary prizes in each of, uh, of the age groups. And uh, the entry form is in the National Grange Program Handbook. And this year's block is the split back star block. Um, questions have come in as to whether they need to be solid colors or any color. And my recommendation is because we want to use these for Quilts of Valor, they probably should follow the red, white, and blue uh, colors but they don't have to be solid colors. And so we we have a few coming in with, you know, small uh, prints, but they're primarily red, white, and blue. And that is perfectly permissible. You have the instructions on making this. I am not a quilter. I, if I tried to make this myself, I probably would not have a square, um, but people that quilt will know what they're doing and how to make this happen, I'm assuming. Um, and so it, it looks, I can probably figure out, use paper and put it together, but we'll we'll see. Um, so that is the quilt block contest. The next one would be the virtual photo contest. In addition to the juniors, you have the adult classes and this lists the adult classes. So entries are submitted electronically uh, in a single file via Google Forms, and you have the the site to submit those to. We have four divisions for the adults. Abandoned buildings, whether they are farm structures, houses, outhouses, etc. Um, I'm We have clouds, whether they're storms, sunsets, or um, anything with clouds in it. Uh, monuments, cemeteries, parks, roadside monuments, they could be statues, you know, wide range. And then state, county, or community fairs. Anything dealing with the fair can go into that class. Our individuals are limited to four photos. They can be all in one or spread out. Um, and everything, anything deemed inappropriate will not be judged um, or exhibited. And that's just to keep our standards of decency and and that type of thing um, at a high level. And we will be giving out monetary prizes uh, and then use those items in marketing. I do have at this point, several sets of postcards from the 2023 um, photos. And if anybody's interested, uh, it's a set of 12 and they cost $10 and I can get those to you if you are interested in uh, obtaining some of the photos. Okay, the garden design contest is our next one. And this is something that Ann started last year. And I didn't really understand it until I saw the entries at a uh, national convention. So again, everything is done electronically and we have uh, groups and divisions within each group. So for junior grangers, container garden, raised beds and ground space garden, uh, the same for an individual and the same for um, a group. So we have definitions of a raised bed of a container garden, which can be as simple as a single pot with one or more plants in it or several containers with multiple plants. Um, I know my junior grangers do deck planters or yard planters every year. And so I didn't even think we should have the kids take pictures and uh, write up what they did here for the uh, the contest. And then a ground space would be anything ground level space cordoned off for growing a garden. 
Sometimes they're fenced, sometimes they're not. And here, if they're not fenced, you're going to lose your garden to the deer. Um, and so you have to do what you have to do to make that happen. So a written description should include the name of the gardener, division group, all of the contact information, the purpose of the garden. Is it to grow or raise herbs, produce for fresh use? Is it ornamental? Is it for gifts, cut flowers? Is it a pollinator garden? There's, um, in, in some instances, your garden may be your landscape because that is a form of gardening as well. Uh, list your plant varieties that you have in the garden and then three photographs, one of the uh, completion of planning, one mid-season and one picture in late August. Um, and then submit your entries and we will announce the winners in the convention in Iowa. And you can see we have uh, cash prizes with ribbons awarded to all entries. Any questions on the gardening? I don't have a question about the gardening, but I was yes. wondering about the quilt square. Yes, go ahead. So I have youth and juniors that are dead set on using colors beyond red, white, and blue. Would that be okay? They can uh, put them in, but because of the purpose of the square is to make quilts of valor this year, um, I would submit them if they if they want, and then we can go from there. Okay, um, I'll let them know, and I'll try to encourage the red, white, and blue, but I'll let them do what they want. Thank you. I would rather encourage participation than to discourage it, and if that's what it takes, um, they're still going to get a participation ribbon. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, so the Weather Watcher Challenge is um, to help educate and inform us as we follow the day-to-day -day weather changes in our local areas. And as I said, here in our state, we have a lot of um, microclimates. Um, and so the growing seasons uh, are dependent upon weather and that type of thing. So we allow individuals and adults, and then there are three divisions, a one-month period, a three-month period, or a... Uh, eight month period or nine month period, December through August. Um, you'd already have to be started with that. I suspect we will get mostly one month periods. Um, so there is a weather watcher form that is here. That is the, that's the entry form. Here is the weather watcher form. And so this is what you look for and you do this on um, preferably a daily basis um, where you, temperatures, wind, it, it, there's going to be a lot of variation from uh, entry to entry, depending upon what uh, what's available out there. Um, something that I, I think is interesting, you know, the phenology notes, you know, if you do it in, Mar in our area, you know, the swallows always make their way up from California in late, uh, mid to late March. So when is that first day? We've always said it was going to be St. Patrick's Day, but it never is exactly St. Patrick's Day. Um, but that's when they find, and so those are notes to take care of or to include. When did trees bud out? I know for us, the pussy willows are already starting to bud out. Uh, any blooms, trees or plants on the ground. If you have ice out, um, which I have daffodils blooming and we had snow the, uh, yesterday morning. So, you know, those are types of things that um, that you can include as well. Um, extreme weather, such as thunderstorms, blizzards, heat waves, with the variations that we are getting, those would be interesting to to study and make note of as well. Um, and so that is the Weather Watcher Challenge, and this is a next portion of um, a sample that can be used. New contest this year. Any questions on Weather Weather Watcher? So the design of program is new. Um, and this may be an educational program, an event, fundraiser, a speaker, or game. I encourage you to think outside of the box. And it's open to Pomona, subordinate community, and junior granges, as well as statewide departments. Um, and so you can see what we have here. It's all done electronically. Divisions, internal Grange program for adults, an external 
community program for adults, which would be non-grangers, or a program designed for children, which may be something for, for your junior grange. Um, and we ask for a written description, uh, the format, uh, goals of the program, plan, materials needed, time required, length, number, minimum number of participants, or maybe maximum number of participants, and how the program was received and any feedback. Um, if you have videos or PowerPoints or slideshows, those may be that are used during the event, we can ask for the links of that. And then two th or to three photos of the program event happening. So judging will be on the information and the facts, the interest factor, interactive engagement potential, creativity and concept, uh, the professionalism and the reflective of Grange principles, values and uh, issues of interest. Um, Entries are due September 1, and we will announce those results and have them on display. My thought is taking the successful programs and making them into a booklet that we can share with other Granges so they can use that as an idea sharing program. Um, and so that will be something we look at depending upon, you know, the time frame in September and October when those all come in. Any questions on the design of program? Again, you have a simple entry form that's to uh, be included as well. And you have samples of, of the program. This sounds like, looks like one that Dave may have done in Connecticut since it's Riverton. I believe that is Dave's um, flag yep. retirement program and veterans program that we used. As okay. The we um, just, this Sunday will be our 30th month of it. Okay. Okay. That's, that's the last of the lecture programs. Any questions on the design of program? Any questions on any of our contests and activities or whatever you want to share with regarding the lecture department? I have another question. Yes, Emma. Um, I had heard a rumor that Evening of Excellence will not be happening in Bettendorf this year. Is that true? That is correct. So is there going to be any alternative for that or is it just it's not happening this year? It's not happening this year. I, I suspect uh, it probably won't happen next year since uh, we are going to be on a boat. Um, and you'd have to commit to being there the entire seven or eight days next year. Was there a reason why the program, why that part was taken away? We don't, we haven't had a lot, uh, we haven't had strong participation in the, in the evening of excellence for several years. Um, I think we peaked out, uh, since COVID I'm, and I, I'll just use this as an example. We've not had more than eight or 10 participants, any of the years since then. And even a few years before that, we weren't getting a lot of participation. Um, and with the lack of participation, and a lot of times it's the same people coming back over and over, and attendance has not been real good either. Um, and so National has chosen to um, have some other type of e activity that on Saturday night this year. Okay, thank you. I'd heard that, and I just hadn't seen anything about it yet. So thank you for explaining yeah, that. Yeah, that'll come out in the... Um, I'm sure it's going to come out in the patrons chain soon, and I will have that in the lectures uh, quarters worth newsletter. Okay, thank you. So I have people that are sending messages in chat.
So there were some just suggestions on the colors of the quilt blocks. If you want to read through those, Emma. I saw that. Thank you so much. Okay. Those are all good suggestions. Um, and the, if, if we do get entries that are not red, white, and blue in, we can make those into pillows or table runners uh, to be used for other, they don't have to necessarily be for the Quilt of Valor. And that's probably what we would uh, end up doing with those. So Wendy from Nampa Valley is asking, what do I mean by on a boat? Um, the national or the, the national convention that was scheduled to be in Charlotte, North Carolina will not be held in Charlotte. Instead, it is scheduled to be on a cruise ship leaving Miami and hitting the part of the Caribbean ports. Uh, and the meetings and all of that will be held on the boat. I don't know all the details about that. Amanda, you might know more about that than I do. Um, sure. I guess to know a little bit, we are on the um, Carnival Cruise Line on a Horizon boat. That's a type of boat that they have. Um, I believe we go out of port, Phil can confirm, November 8th of next year in Miami. Um, so you'll get to Miami. Um, it is get on the boat. You'll be on the boat for eight days. You'll get off. So I know that there are some folks who are concerned that they only come in for a day or two normally. Um, this convention obviously doesn't uh, have that as very conducive, um, but it should still be a lot of fun. There will be four working days, business days of session. Um, but if you're not a session person, there's still going to be a lot of other things for you to go and do on top of the fact that you're on a boat with like a casino and all you can eat food and a volleyball court and spa. So you can find lots, I'm sure, to do. Um, we'll have three days out at port at the ABC Islands. So Aruba. Uh, Curacao and Barbados. On air. On air. I knew it wasn't Barbados. <laughs> uh, and um, there should be some fun excursions that are Grange, um, you know, oriented as far as your Grangers are, are getting together and going uh, off and doing some things as well as the ones the cruise line has. So um, it's not all, you know, pay for play. Um, you should enjoy that. And then uh, it's, slightly more expensive at the uptake for you to go on the cruise as far as the the room and board and the food but when you get done with it you have food for all eight days instead of your typical add-on 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 with national convention to you know include more meals or, or do anything um, with those things together with us so hopefully it is actually a much more cost-effective convention for some of us um, so we hope to see you there Thank you, Amanda. Any other questions on lectures, programs, or programming? Since the um, patrons chain has not gone out yet, are you still accepting things since I forgot the deadline? Yes, because okay. nobody has submitted anything yet. Okay. I mean, we have, we're going to focus on the contest because it's time to start the promotion of those. Um, but I, I'm looking for other additional information. Okay. Tom, this is Dave Roberts from Connecticut. W one thing I would love to hear at some point is how to better connect state contests with the national contests. For example, we do a virtual photo contest and my Grangers tell me we used to send our winners to national and we don't do that anymore. So our virtual contest ends at our state event and then you're running the national virtual contest. The categories don't jive. You have different categories. I'm just at some point we ought to look at how we can restore some of that fun competition, you know, to go from your local to your Pomona to your state to national. And I, I'm not sure what the answer is. I know we didn't like the hard copies of the photos, but is there something that we might do to better connect all the levels? I, I agree with you, Dave. Um, 
when when I was first winning a state lecture, I had to send a box, and we had the same box that we used because we had art and we had photos. And my box was about four feet by three feet and a foot deep that all of my entries would fit into. Um, and it would cost me upwards of a hundred bucks each way to send that in. Um, the, the difficulty I had in the art contest, and that's one reason we haven't brought the art contest back, is I was unable to insure any, well, the, the question, the insurance for the art was always an issue. Um, and the question from the Postal Service was, are the artists still alive? Because if they were not, the Postal Service would not insure those entries or those those items. Uh, mm -hmm. They could be recreated, so they did allow that. But just the fact that then we're getting, you know, 38 boxes from or 36 boxes from around the country, having to pack everything up and then repack it and send it back to... Um, each state became a real issue. Um, so that's why we've gone to virtual. And I think we can, what, what my goal would be, would be to get those classes out much earlier so you can see what those classes are going to be at the national level and try to um, incorporate some of that into your um, state contests. Thank you. We still use... Um, a regular photo contest in, in our state. Um, and we have to have Pomona level judging and then only the one entry from each Pomona goes on to state. Um, if I had every state participating in photos, we would do that. But the fact is that many states have very little participation at all. Um, and so I don't want to limit a state to one entry in each class. That makes sense. Thank you. Any other questions? Katie, you have to have questions. I've been, I was down at your contest this year. No, actually, I don't have any questions because I've, uh, I've already been incorporating them into our uh, Grange Expo book so that even if uh, somebody doesn't see the contest that they want, they also have information about the National Grange Contest. Okay. Well, and we, in in Washington, we are already in the starting contests. We've had some contests uh, because we have to have Pomona level contests. Um, some Pomona's have already had their first set of contests for some of the some of the items. Um, and by the time we get to the end of May, Pomona's are done, and then we have state contest in June. Um, and I think Oregon has their state contest in June. Um, but I think most of the rest of them are all in the fall. Mm -hmm. Did you have something, Diana? Um, the only thing is when we did have to mail things, our convention is very, very late in the season. Sometimes we were lucky if it would get there on time. So that's one of the other disadvantages to sending state winners to national to be, you know, to be judged and that kind of stuff. And I also personally have had things ruined that got packed wrong coming back from National Grange. Um my son sent a, it was in the family activities, but he sent a um, snowman that we very carefully got there, but it was um, made out of string. And when it came back, we called it that it had melted in the um, shipping because it was this flat thing that had been, um, you know, very three dimensional. So there's some real disadvantages and you have that chance of losing somebody's valuable um, yes. things that they have made. You know, it's just it's just like a fair and with my fair we all we take entries by mail um but to make sure you get everything back to the right place uh, there's just a lot of paperwork and it's not time is not on our side with with the national convention and and trying to make that all happen 
Any other questions on contests? This is the quietest group I've had in a long time. Anything you want to add, Amanda, as far as your fellowship first Fridays? Ooh, uh, yeah. Um, this Friday, we have one coming up. Um, we have Carolyn Ostrander, who has a PhD um, in her study area was Women in the Grange. She is from New York. Uh, Steve Coy is on here. I know he knows her well. He's heard her speak a couple of times. And our focus is on uh, Temperance Kelly this time, who is a founder that is often overlooked, or at least in my book, she's a founder that's often overlooked. Um, and we typically kick these off just after 8.30 um, with basically you know, a, a welcome, a quick rundown of any information that might have come from some of the departments um, or national news, and then go into our lectures program pretty much for the, the sake of um, calling it something we're used to. And then we break out into groups or rooms that um, you can choose which room you'd like to go into. And they're really just fellowship rooms. So you might have a topic to start a conversation, but you don't have to stay on that topic. Um, and just enjoy getting to know other Grange members around the country. And when you're over it, you can you can exit with that little button at the bottom that says end or leave meeting. So um, we encourage you guys to come. Anybody who attends this one who RSVPs, and I think Phil will probably toss in the chat the RSVP link, if not, I can, uh, we'll get a little token of appreciation for RSVPing. You don't have to RSVP to attend, but um, to be very, very crystal clear, you're helping me with my doctoral program because I need to get a data set. And so you are signing up and answering two questions and giving me some data that I can use in my stats class. So thanks. Um, that's why you get a, a thank you gift. Thank you, Amanda. This last month, she focused on the Lunar New Year, and January was on soup. Phil, anything you want to share from the communications department? Um, I will say that for any lecturers who are starting to plan things for Grange Month, we do have materials up on the website um, for Grange Month 2024. We are planning Grange Spirit Week, which we've done for the past couple of years as kind of a virtual sharing from April 14th to the 20th. Had to do some quick math there. Um, and every day has its own theme based around our new National Grange theme of Grange Strong. So uh, check out those materials. More information on that will be rolling out weekly in the patrons chain coming up soon. Yes, Amanda, you lit up. I did. Oh, I think it was from my email dinging at me. So thanks for register RSVP. <laughs> okay, well, we're getting about 50 minutes. Um, I don't have anything else to add unless people just want to BS about different things. Um, but I... I, I, I do need to know, I really am looking for about four more people for the lecture advisory team. I have uh, four that have expressed interest, um, and I would like to uh, get that so we can start meeting uh, via Zoom in March, working on the program for next year. Anything else? Well, hearing none, thank you for attending, and uh, we'll get you out of here a few minutes early. Great. Thanks so much, Tom. Thank you. And for anybody who does have, who wants to reference this later, this will be up on our YouTube channel. Uh, by the end of the week.